looking back to the final days of World War II, it seems inconceivable that the Allies might have lost the war. But the fact is that at the very time the greatest assault force in history was successfully launching the invasion of Normandy, German scientists were on the terrifying threshold of a one-sided push-button war. Somewhere in Nazi Germany, poised and protected from retaliation under 90 feet of steel, reinforced concrete and solid rock, Vengeance 10, a rocket capable of destroying whole cities, was in the final stages of testing. How did it happen? How was it possible for German scientists to make such fantastic progress with rocket research and development? For the answer to this question, we must go back 14 years to the New Mexico desert in 1930. Working with just a small staff and grants of less than $200,000 from the Daniel and Florence Guggenheim Foundation, one man, American scientist Dr. Robert Hutchings Goddard represented the entire United States rocket research program. Dr. Goddard, whose life work was devoted to rocket development, was not only a brilliant scientist, but was also a man of vision who foresaw the many uses to which his discoveries would one day be put. However, as we see in these early films, Dr. Goddard's initial experiments met with something less than success. But with each effort came new knowledge to apply to the next attempt. From these early experiments came many pioneering achievements which have hardly been improved upon even to this day. Here, Dr. Goddard demonstrates gyroscopic control. Other Goddard innovations include the use of movable vanes for steering, a removable nose cone for the storage of instruments for recording information, and most important of all, the development and practical application of a liquid fuel system. Parachute recovery of rockets was still another Goddard innovation. In years to come, every single one of these developments is destined to become a critical part of the German rocket program. Goddard's work captured the attention of the American press and the American public, but unfortunately, interest was focused on the romantic rather than the scientific implications. And although the United States government took Goddard's work somewhat more seriously than either the press or the public, they did, however, reject his proposals for a more far-reaching rocket development program. But if the United States would not buy Goddard's dream, another nation would. For 10 cents each, the cost of handling charged by the United States Patent Office, German scientists were able to purchase copies of all of Dr. Goddard's patents. It was one of history's greatest bargains and strangest ironies. It is now the early 40s. Robert Goddard has been summoned to Annapolis, Maryland to work on the JATO program. JATO, the utilization of rockets for jet-assisted takeoff of propeller-driven aircraft is considered by the United States to be the only practical military application of rockets. At this same time, at Peenemunde, Germany, the Nazi rocket development program has come to this. All the knowledge acquired by Dr. Goddard and other rocket scientists throughout the world is suddenly in the possession of German scientists and has become the basis for Hitler's most closely guarded secret the V for Vengeance Rocket Weapons Project. Here in captured film footage, we see that early German efforts like Goddard's encountered many problems. But in spite of these early failures, German rocketry in the early 40s was clearly years ahead of any other nation. Hitler had lavished over $125 million on the Pinemunde guided missile establishment. But prior to the development of the V-2 rocket, came the notorious V-1, the buzz bomb. 
A major breakthrough in the development of the V-1 rocket is recreated here in this dramatic scene from the MGM film Operation Crossbow. Anna Reich, the famous German aviatrix, flies aboard a V-1 to try to discover the cause of its erratic behavior in the air. Before her, many others had been killed attempting the same feat. Miss Reich is still alive today. In 1942, another woman plays an equally important role in the history of rocketry. Constance Babington Smith, a British intelligence photographic interpreter, calls attention to an unidentifiable object on a reconnaissance photo taken over Peenemunde, Germany. This, together with mounting rumors of a massive German rocketry program, is enough to prompt Prime Minister Winston Churchill to launch a full-scale investigation. Operation Crossbow is born. August 17, 1943. Winston Churchill authorizes over 600 heavy bombers almost the entire striking force of the RAF Bomber Command, to head out over the North Sea for Peenemunde, Germany. He knows that mass retaliation by the German Luftwaffe and ground anti-aircraft installations could possibly destroy British air power in a single action. But the gamble pays off. Fantastically. The German rocket program is now delayed a year, just long enough so that it cannot impede the projected Allied invasion of Normandy. But the threat is hardly ended, and phase two of Operation Crossbow swings into action. A specially trained group of Allied espionage experts is parachuted into German-held territory to infiltrate the rocket research and development centers. What they see leaves no doubt in anyone's mind that the Germans are, in fact, producing the most colossal weapons arsenal in the history of mankind and a projected quota of sufficient size to annihilate the city of London. rocket is not Hitler's ultimate weapon, for in the closing days of World War II, the Nazis are dangerously close to the completion of the V-10 rocket, known as the New York model. <laughs> 